time. <laughs> Amen? So, 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 so now, look at one more time. Look at somebody and say, with all love and all sincerity, say, your attitude is showing. Okay. Now, finish it with me. You're good. <laughs> All right, God is good. So we're going to surrender. We're going to surrender to God. Okay? Ready? Go ahead. Go ahead, Brandon.
you've already put in, it's back in the plate in the back. If you've already put in, that's cool. If you haven't put in, put it in your hand right now and hold it up. And we're going to say it. If you've already put in, still hold your hand up. But everybody put your hand up. Let's say this together. I lift my offering to you that it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. I will at least my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply it. Accept my seed, oh Lord. Give the Lord another hand. Oh, 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 oh. Go ahead, Brandon. Lord, saints, does anybody have an outspoken request this morning? Bless God for saving me and watching out for me and not leading out Him, God, but Holy Ghost and Jesus. Let be out of my heart from Your Word, Lord. Amen. Oh, thank you. Lord. Lord. Isn't it awesome that they changed his vow on uh, Thursday and he come on on Friday? Isn't like that just absolutely 100% awesome? Yes. And that his ticker's ticking better than his ticket in a long ticking time. <laughs> I want to thank my, thank my pastor for, for awesome standing by me and sticking to him. Thank my wife for watching out for me and doing things for me. And She's awesome. And I want to thank the church for all the prayers that they sent up to God for me. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity to be in your house this morning. And Lord, we know all things, Father, are possible through you, Lord God. We just ask you to Show yourself strong on behalf of us this morning, Lord God. Touch your people. You heard the requests and you see the needs, Lord God. We just ask that you would supply them according to your riches and glory, Father. Let your hand show itself strong. Let your people see it that we may further believe and depend upon you in all things. And give testimony of how you moved, Father, in our lives. Father, be with us in the remainder of this service. Prepare our hearts to receive the message that you have, and Father. And use us, Lord God. For your glory, and we'll be sure to give you honor and praise for it all. In Christ Jesus' name, the church. Amen. 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 Are ready to worship? Stand back up. We're going to worship one more time in song. Then we're going to go right to God's word. Amen. 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 God is so awesome. Now let's, now let's worship. Ready? How many know that serving God should get sweeter? Sweeter. The path may get harder. The, the battle may get more intense, but serving God, that part gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Ready? All right, now who you're, you're taking it? All right, here we go.
God can have it. Amen. Watch out. God's got something special for us today. We just got to trust Him. Amen. Just trust Him all the way. We're going to start a new series today. And like I said, this series is going to take us all the way through Easter and after Easter because this, this, is, one of those, this is one of those things where you don't want to, to breeze through it because it's very important. The Word of God should build your faith. When you come in on Sunday morning, you should, you should have your faith built. You should have your love for God uh, uh, grow. There should be things happening here that just make you want to worship and praise God and want to be part of His family. And so it's very, very, very important that, that we do this. Uh, before we get started, I uh, read this story. A uh, professor, I hope this was none of y'all. A professor gave a big exam to his students. When he collected the papers, one student had attached a $100 bill to his test with a note saying a dollar per point. The next day, the student got his test score packed and $64 change. <laughs> was that any of y'all? God is good. I think God is good. God is good. All right. How many know that we are going through a battle right now? Uh, our, there's a battle in our nation. There's a battle in our world. There's a battle over in Afghanistan. Steel stuff going on over there. There's a battle over in Ukraine. There's battles over all over. Just pick a spot. Take your finger and pick a spot. And you'll find there's a battle or there's a skirmish or something going on. Can't always say that who was the one that started the initial skirmish, or started the skirmish now, but I know who initially started it all. Amen? And that was safe. The battle is raging on, but the cool thing is Satan will not win. Y'all say that with me. Satan will, will not, win. not win. Say it again. Satan will, will not, win. not win. Let's go we'll read this. this we we'll read it several times. We find with me. I love it. Get your Bibles out. Turn to Matthew chapter 16. Remember, this is going to be, this is going to take us all the way through Easter. And when those of you going in, you'll understand why this is going to take us through to Easter. It's important that we understand some of the principles that we get ready to be taught. Only get one principle today. Uh, all together, there's going to be seven plus principles, but it's very important that we get this first one really, really strong. Stand for the reading of God's Word. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That's something very powerful. Think about it now. Who do you say, you personally, who do you say Jesus, the Son of Man, is? Because if you don't know that, then I hope you get to know that through this series. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? This isn't about what your grandmama told you. This isn't about what your granddaddy said. This isn't about your great aunt, your third, third cousin. They go to church every Sunday. They're really nice people all the time. Uh, do, do, do you know God? Do you, do you, do you serve the Lord? Do you know, well, my grandmama is in church every Sunday. Uh, my granddad, before he died, he was really a very powerful man of God. No, no, no. Who do you say that Jesus is? Amen. Look at me, Matthew. Who do you say that Jesus is? And they said something again. Oh, here it goes. He said, Then by whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whosoever that what, or whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be found in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth it shall be loosed in heaven. Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, that you are alive and you are well, God, and you are working all things for our good. God, I know there's a battle raging. There's, there's people just this day, right at this moment. There's a battle in their homes. There's a battle for food. There's a battle for medical needs. There's a battle for their mental health. There's a battle all over the world for control of territories. There's all kinds of battles that are going on. And if we can all get a glimpse of what Jesus said to his disciples that day, who do you say I am? The world will change overnight. Ask you right now, Lord, to help us to get a fresh, fresh victory. Help us to get a fresh anointing. Help us to get a fresh look at who you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen, 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 Amen. You can see the way that tell somebody the past is behind us, the future is ahead of us, God is with us. And, and nothing, shall be, and nothing shall be impossible. Wow. So we're talking about the battle of the rage of souls. Let me, let me just kind of, I'm going to kind of run through it kind of quick. There's a lot here, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to overdo it. But I don't want to underdo it. Okay? I don't know if you've noticed today. Follow me. <laughs> Have you noticed the satanic activity has risen to an all-time high? It's between God being snubbed with every, you can't say God's name, you can't, you're going to offend somebody if you talk about God, you're going to offend somebody if you pray, blah, 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 blah. There was one high school, literally, there was a high school at their graduation just a couple years ago, they were told that they could not pray for the students after they turned their tassels. Can't pray for them. And they said, they tried to get it through and said, no, the city council and said, no, because you're going to offend somebody. So you cannot pray for the seniors as they turn their, the graduates as they turn their tassels. So they came up with an idea. When they turned their tassels, all of the, <laughs> all of the students sneezed. And somebody called, God bless you! <laughs> And you can't hurt anybody's feelings agenda. Uh, Satan has stepped up in all of this. People don't even realize it. He stepped up in all this stuff and he's gaining momentum daily. That's why some of the most absurd things that you could ever imagine is being called in some areas and it doesn't even make sense. I can't understand why it's even being talked about, but it's because of all this stuff and Satan is getting him a foothold in all this stuff that's happening around us. Now, matter of fact, the battle that we are facing today is real. It's a real battle. Not only is it real, the lines have been drawn. Not only the lines have been drawn, sides have been taken, territories have been lost, and as time goes by, it seems that Satan is picking up steam. And he's running the rough shot. You know what rough shot means? It means to step over somebody, to trample them down, to not care about their feelings, to not worry about if you hurt them. Whatever they got to say does not matter. And he's running over the church rough shot. It's important that we understand this so that we don't lay down and take it and lay down and play dead, but know there's a battle going on. You know, uh, uh, I, I was, I was, I was. Watching softball yesterday. I got two granddaughters playing softball, and I got a grandson playing baseball. And I tell them all the time, and when they're up the back, I always tell them, I say, it is not, I tell them this all the time, hold this in the of this. It is not something to be ashamed of if you strike out at the plate. But what's something to be aggravated with that makes me mad when I was their coach, especially, is if you stand by and let three strikes go by and you never swing. That makes me mad. And so my boys learn, okay, dad's watching, swing. <laughs> I told him, there's no shame in it. You swung. 
And the granddaughters, they told them the same thing. And as the coach told them, my grandson, the same thing. <coughs> Make sure three balls don't come by a free strike and you never take the bat off your shoulder. <coughs> it's kind of like you're giving up and never fire a shot. Satan is throwing fastballs at us. He's throwing curveballs at us. He's throwing change ups. And you got a decision to make. Are you going to sit there with your bat on your shoulder and then three strikes go by or are you going to go down swimming? I may go down, but I promise you I'm going to go down swinging. Because you got to understand something. In all of this, the devil just won't win. How many know what WWJD stands for? Somebody say, what's WWJD? Why would get Jesus do? That's a good question. <laughs> okay, WWJD is what would Jesus do? What is it? DJW. The devil just won't win. The devil just won't win. I want to get some things made up on one side of WWJD and the other side of DJWW. The devil just won't win. So it's important to understand that we're going through this battle and it is a tough, tough, tough time. Oh, Talk about the size. I said size is drawn. I'm going to talk about it for a minute. There's heaven and there's hell. There's Satan and there's God. So, so, so watch this. Watch, watch. Here's the difference. And, and, and you've got to understand that when you're falling for the Satan, this is the stuff you're going to be, <coughs> that's going to be happening to you. Ready? God is our creator. Satan is the destroyer. God is good. Satan is evil. Even when it seems like he's being good, it's just part of the trap. It's part of the honey to get the fly in. I promise you that once you get in that honey, you'll find out that it weren't so sweet after all. God is the giver of life. Satan is a murderer, and he was a murderer from the beginning, according to the word of God. God is love. Satan is hatred in violence. God is truth. And God cannot lie, but Satan is the father of lies. In other words, and one more time, one more thing, God is our greatest advocate. He's on our side. Satan is our greatest adversary. So you've got to understand something. Satan opposes everything God is and everything God does. You know, it gets, it gets aggravated when I see some of these politicians. If somebody's on the other side of what they are, they automatically oppose everything they say. Good, bad, or ugly. We should oppose them because it's the other side. And I see people, well, they think it's a good idea to find out who said it. I don't like that idea anymore. You ever seen people like that? Well, they find out who comes with the idea they didn't like it anymore. Well, that's how Satan is. What Satan knows is God's business, he hates it. Once he knows God has said it, he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He hates everything and opposes everything that God does. Now let's just talk a little about, about Satan for a minute. Here's the strategies of Satan. And we're reading these scriptures. This is very important. This, you know, the Bible, you say, well, the Bible doesn't necessarily tell us a whole lot about Satan's beginnings. Well, you got to understand something. The Bible is not the story of Satan. The Bible is the story of man, his creation, his fall, his redemption, and his eternal place. That's it. That's what the Bible is all about. Now, God gives us all this other stuff. If you know what you're looking for, God puts it in his word. He tells you things. But the Bible is specifically about man. So, so here we go. And about Jesus with the plan of salvation. So, so here we go. Ready? Isaiah 14. Wow. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. Satan himself failed because he was prideful. Isaiah 14. 12 and 16 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will send into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. 
I will ascend above the highest of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Okay. The Bible tells us that when you're ordaining elders and preachers, you better be careful not to get a young one that doesn't understand because you'll get lifted up the same pride of Satan and he'll fall. What is that talking about? Does it mean I will sin above God? I'll be like God? No, what that means is, and we do this all the time. I don't need to go to God. I got this all figured out. Big hit. Wow. I don't need, I'll pray, I'll pray, but let me get it done first and then I'll pray. When you push God to the side or put him on the shelf and he becomes your parachute instead of your pilot, you will fall into this gap. Wow. That's an ouch. Y'all can say that's an ouch. And we all do it. Anybody here has never said, I got this before you pray? Anybody here besides me? Can everybody raise your hand, sharp, and look around and see everybody's hand raised? Everybody raise your hand, please. Thank you. I hate to think I'm a little raise my hand. I was just sun so fast. And I said, I said to the kids, I said, how many here are going to hell? Stand up. And the little boy in the front stood up. I said, dude, why are you standing up? He said, I didn't want you, you're standing up. I didn't want you to be the only one. I will send by the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now, now what happens to us is, we don't necessarily want to be hell here, but what happens is we cause problems in our own life because we try to figure it out ourselves and do it ourselves. We don't need God. And what happens is we, we bring on our own sense of hell around us. Yeah. Amen? So, so he said, well, look, look, they will they that see this shall never look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth tremble that did shake the kingdoms? Think about this. One day we're going to see Satan. And when we see him, we're going to go, that's the guy we've been afraid of? That's the guy that's been caused all this problem? That's the guy that's been tearing the world all to pieces? That's the guy that's tricked so many people into going to hell? There's going to come a day when we see that. But until then, we're here, we're now, and I want you to understand, just seeing that right there, is this the man that caused all this to happen? We can say boldly that the the devil just won't win. Glory! Ezekiel 28. It says, thou, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covered. He was awesome. He was beautiful. The, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the pearl, the ox, the, 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 the onyx, uh, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the worship of the tablets, and the, the pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou was created. Thou art the anointed chair that covereth. I have said thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. But the most of the first place that have filled in the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering chair, from the midst of the stones of fire. This is where actually we're talking about his pipe. This is where they believe that, that, and we hear it all the time, that Satan, uh, he controlled the music in heaven. Music has a way of touching people and anointing them and doing something special with them against the heart, moving and so, 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 here he is. He keeps trying to be the man. He keeps trying to take control. So he lost out because of personal pride. Now, he was in the garden. If he's in the garden of God, and now he's lost his position, he has to look and seek Adam. Standing in the place of the Lord. <laughs> and so now he attacks, he's attacked because of his personal pride. Now he's <laughs> going to attack Adam through pride and misinformation. He takes the word, he spins it all around, he makes him say what he wants to say. And before you know it, he has destroyed the mission. He's destroyed.
destroyed it first out in Genesis 1 or 3 and 1 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Here it goes, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. <coughs> and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. <coughs> and the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. For God, does not, God knows in that day that you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened, and you shall be as God's only good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave it with her husband also, who was with her, and he did eat. It's hard to understand, because God tells Adam, don't mess with this, because the day you do, you're going to surely die. Leave it alone. And so here's his wife, and she goes, and, and, and the beast don't even talk, or Satan don't even talk to Adam. He's talking to Eve, but the Bible says that Adam was with her. Think about it. Adam is with her. So Adam's hearing this conversation. He should have stepped in and said, And the Bible says she eats of it, and then she goes, hey, here, you eat some too. And of course, the blame game starts. You've heard me say it a million times. You know, Adam, Adam, he said, Adam, did you eat of that fruit? And Adam goes, it was that woman you gave me. And said, did you eat that fruit? She said, it was that snake. And that's the snake, and the snake, after that, the snake can have a leg stand on, of course. And their eyes were both open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thin leaves together and made them some paper. This is the beginning of spiritual warfare. Though the fire darts that were even brought out was Satan twisting the word of God. And the big mistake Adam made was he was the priest of his home. He relinquished that, gave that to his wife, and instead of saying what he heard personally, he just listened and he obeyed, and the rest is history. There was two deaths that day of Adam and two deaths of Eve. The first death, they both spiritually died. And the second death was they began to decay. And they pass it down to us. We were all born in sin and we were born to die. So now, watch this. So, Genesis chapter 3, the first Adam. The second Adam is in the wilderness. Jesus began to take his ministry, he's going into his ministry. He's getting ready to get on out and get it done. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he's tempted of the devil. And he does good because he's not eating anything, he's not drinking anything. And he does good. He does not fall before it. Then at the very last, that's when Satan gives him the three great temptations. So for 40 days and 40 nights, as his body is declining because he's not eating or drinking, he hits him. And he's at his lowest point. He hits him with the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He offers him, he says, make this, you're hungry, make some bread. All this kingdom is going to be yours if you worship me. And if you cast yourself down off this Go to the temple, and God says he'll let his angels catch you. He should dash your foot upon the stone. And that's the three temptations we get in our life all the time. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. But when he tried this, guess what? He couldn't win. He tried to destroy the last Adam, and the last Adam stood up and said, No, that's not how this is going to go down. Now, today... Trying to hurry through this now. Today, there's a personal attack. And everybody's in here. No matter your age, no matter how long you've been serving God, I used to think years ago that once I got about 50 or 60, man, it'll be a piece of cake. And those guys that are 80 and 90, man, they don't have any, any aggravation. They got this, they just John Wayne all the time. 
And I found out the older I get, the more I learn about God's Word, the more I find all kinds of attacks. Either personally, or people in my family, or people that I know, or my church members, I have to guide them through. So, so your personal attack is coming from Satan through any means possible. Think about it. Through any means possible, what does that mean? That means he can use your wife to say just the right thing at just the right time and cause a downfall. He can use your child to say just the right thing or do just the right thing at just the right time. He can use your friends. He can use your co-workers. The Bible says he disguises himself as an angel of light. So don't be a don't, don't be Amazed, he can disguise himself as an angel of light. <coughs> but he comes to us and he knows how to get us. And his mission is to destroy the mission of the church. If he gets you mad at somebody, guess what? Sometimes the people that you're the maddest at are the ones that God wanted you to do the most with to help. But how can you help them if you're mad? There's other people that we just say, uh oh, -uh. They don't look like me, they don't talk like me, they don't act like me, so I won't be around them. And God said, You're the one that's going to make a difference because you're the one they'll listen to. So, watch this. Same desires, same desires, watch this, to affect your thinking, to affect your life, and to affect your relationship. That's his desire. And if you think about this, that's how things work. My thinking affects me personally. Then it affects those that I'm working with. That's how it works. So Satan starts here. The biggest battleground you ever step on, and the biggest battleground Satan steps on to you is about four, six inches. That's right here. It wants to affect your thinking, your life, your relationships in order to infect your thinking, your life, your relationships. Wow. I watch it, I see it, I have to fight it myself all the time. Somebody aggravate me. And I go, is, are they really aggravating me or is it just because my knees are hurting? Or is it just because I haven't had any sleep? Or is it just because I haven't had a chance to sit down and do anything but just stay right over here? Is it really, are they really bothering me that bad or is it just me? Am I tired? How many there were swing shift? Third shift heals. Lord have mercy. Sometimes on third shift, the older I got, the harder it was to sleep on third shift, and the meaner I got on third shift. I remember one time when DC was only about, he was less than two years old, he was like 18 months old. And I had to go to work, I was the second night of third shift, we're sitting there, and back then he didn't have all these channels. So we had gospel music time through Williamson, and came on one night a week, and it was on one Monday night. So we're sitting in the park, I just got up, I'm sitting down, sitting down, my wife's sitting there, DC's mom, and DC's only about 18 months old. I was just already ill. And she said something like that the way she said it, and I just jumped right in there and started. I just started. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she started by, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember going at it? Listen to gospel music time. Praise God! You, you, that was stupid. Praise God! Hallelujah! How can you do that? Praise God! Hallelujah! I wish you'd try that. In D.C., at 18 months old, I know what happened. God looked down and saw us and said, so y'all worshiping me and fighting one another at the same time. Why, that's awesome. I guess y'all don't know where this is coming from. So I'm using one of the purest heart here to go through your hard head. And DC stood up 
and he walked over and he grabbed his mama's hand and he walked over and grabbed mine and he pulled them together and he said, let's pray. Amen. <laughs> Guess what? That ended my feelings that night. Okay. It's the same desire seeks. Now, this is our prelude. This was the opening. You might not see all this again coming up shortly. Or maybe see a variation of it, but this is it. Now, the number one thing we're going to talk about today is where we were just at. The Bible says, I tell you this, Peter, on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That is the most powerful and the most misquoted scripture I think I've ever seen in the world. Most powerful because it gives me hope. But it's misunderstood because people lose sight of who's what in this scripture. Let's see what it is. Look, we're going to talk about it right now. We're going to start it. Seven things the devil cannot do. Number one today. If you'll understand this, this will start you off in spiritual warfare in a winning situation. This is not a Hail Mary. This is a way to get it done. When I was a football coach, I would, I would, I would tell my guys all the time when I was running, when, when, when I was running it, I would tell them this, listen, fellas, you don't have to do 25, 30 yards of carry. All you got to do is a couple of yards of carry. Just a couple of yards of carry. If you can get a couple of yards of carry and keep that ball with a couple of yards of carry, I said, guess what? You're going to keep on and keep on and keep on until you get to the goal line. But if you keep on thinking you've got to make the big Hail Mary and you've got to make these big exorbitant plays, you're going to, you're going to get, they're, they're going to intercept you, you're going to lose the ball, things are going to get bad, but if you can just keep going, just two or three, two or three yards of play, man on man. And some of us didn't understand it today. We're trying to get the Hail Mary, we're trying to get the great big pass, we're trying to get the you know, that awesome thing, you know, God said, just give me a little bit every day. Just give me a little bit. If you can give me a little bit every day, you ain't got to make that. You're saying, well, I, uh, uh, I want to do this, or I, I want to do it this way. And, and, you know, and, and if you can't get it done in a day or two, then God tells you. God says, you ain't got to go out there and celebrate the small victories. Just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and watch what I can do in your life. So, so here we go. Number one. The devil cannot, y'all say this with me, the devil cannot stop the building of God's church. Y'all say that again. The devil cannot stop the building of God's church. One more time. The devil cannot stop the building of God's church. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Sure. He's tried to still here 6,000 years ago. He thought he would stop God's plan for me. The first Adam messed up, yes, but the second Adam got things back in order. Let's read this. The Amplified Version. And I tell you, you are Peter. In the Greek, it's Petros, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, Petra, a huge rock like Shrabala, I will build my church. In other words, yes, you're part of the foundation. Yes, you're important, Peter. But it's your profession that I am the Son of God, that's the big rock. You are a little rock because you're used, you're there, you're part of the foundation, you're part of getting to be part of the plan, but it's knowing and professing that I am the Son of God. That's where the power is. So yes, everybody in here, we can all be made part of the little rocks, but the big rock is Jesus and the profession of our faith. Upon this new rock, I will build my church in the gates of hell, Hades. The powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it, or be strong to its detriment, or hold out against it. So now, here it goes. Who do men say that I am? Wow. <coughs> Miss yourself. Did you know Jesus never asked questions for his benefit? He always asked questions for ours. So we can better know ourselves. 
It's one thing for people to say, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I would do. If I was you, I would. Then you find them in the same situation and they're not doing it. See, it's easy to blab it. Blab an idea. Blab a plan. But it's a whole lot harder to grab a plan. We can blab it all day long. But the question is, can you grab it? Can you hold it? Can you do it? So, so remember, this is spiritual warfare. And it's all about, Easter's all about. So, upon this rock, I'll build my church. First, it was a person. The rock is Jesus. It's a profession. That he's the Son of Christ. Or he's the Son of God. He is the Christ, the Son of God. And it is personal. Do you believe it? I love this. I'm going to go through it quickly. Instead of reading all the scriptures, I'm just going to go through it quickly. What you think about something? I love that picture. Jesus is the master builder. Wow. The church that Jesus built. Really? Upon this rock I'll build my church. Jesus is the architect. Revelation 13, 8. The Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. There we are. Come on up here. Get back up here. Come on. Stop it. I got a woman in the house that does the same thing. Ready? He's the architect. He said, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. He is the carpenter. Matthew 16, 18 says, Upon this rock I will build my church. He is the cornerstone. Psalm 18, 22 says, He's the stone that the builders refused. And he's become the head, the cornerstone. He's the foundation. 1 Corinthians 13, 3 and 11 says, No man can lay a foundation other than God. So, the three rest of the ends and the old rugged cross. Wow. He didn't even say When I got this revelation, let me tell you, I'll talk about that in a while. I got a revelation years ago. I'm pretty sure you all got the same revelation, but just in case you didn't, this is something you got to remember. This helps me when I go in on Mondays to the penitentiary center. It helps me when I go into hospitals. It helps me when I go to prisons. It helps me when I go to some very rough, rough situations. <coughs> you ready? Satan is a defeated foe. Did y'all you know that? And why is it so powerful? Because he won't accept it. champions in boxing and the major champions in football and the major champions these guys that have longevity even if they get out of age when it shouldn't be having that longevity it's because they refuse to accept defeat Satan knows what the end has but he will not Except, wow, it is so, so, so powerful. Almost through. I said almost. If you get a chance to see that firsthand, you got a problem. Hell. Okay. So it's not your problem what happens to you after you die. And that's what we talked about hell. We're never talking about heaven. We're talking about some other things. But we've talked about soul sleep. And we talked about all the things. But coming up, we're going to be talking more about heaven. But we still had to get all that in. So now, the gates of the city. I want you to think about something. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, it's like Satan, as in just Satan, he said the gates of hell. So, the gates of the city represented wisdom. That's where the doctors and the lawyers and the Sanhedrin met. It represented authority. That's where they steered in and controlled the power. Uh, authority was acted on there. Wayward children were judged there. People were judged there. There was power there. There was strength. That's where the ability was given for people to get their jobs done. The young men had strength, but the older guys didn't direct him. It was an entrance to the activity. Satan and his angels, they affected the affairs of man and this world. The facts are, here it is. They keep saying the gates are coming against us. The gates are coming against the church. The gates of hell are coming against the church. The gates of hell are coming against the church. There's something special about gates. They're stationary. Right. They don't move. That's why he didn't just say Satan. Because Satan moves. But the boldest, the brightest, the most powerful that Satan's got in his arsenal. Yet they're coming. But the gates? It lets me know that Jesus wants us to be on the offensive, not the defense. If you think about it that way, how many of you ever gone fishing in a boat and put up a sign, three worms, and waited for the fish to jump in? Anybody? How I many ever went hunting? So I don't feel too good today, so I'm gonna sit in my retirement chair and I'm gonna watch the walls and I'll keep my rock, I'll, I'll keep my, my gun right here and I'll put a sign outside saying, Deer, come on in. Enjoy yourself. But you gotta step into the territory. The same way. Instead of us being afraid of the gates, let's storm the gates. Let's go forward, not backwards, not go, whoo, go forward. Let them know that we're not going to take it anymore. Go forward, not backwards, forward. I'm not trying to just defend my house. I'm going to protect my house. I'm going forward and fight the enemy. <laughs> when you get that, it's amazing. When you get that in your mind, what happens? Watch this. Get ready to close. The central, say, central task and desire is to prevent Jesus from being glorified. Do you know that? To glorify means to esteem glory is to magnify the honor. And when you glorify Jesus, what you do is you acknowledge his being, you acknowledge his attributes, you acknowledge his acts. Jesus said, for us to glorify, and first he says to God, God, glorify your son that I may glorify you. And then chapter 15 and 8, he says, we glorify him when we become a productive Christian. When Jesus glorified, something happens. It always happens. I'm going to look through what finishes the scripture. John 10, 10. The thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I'm come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. It's so amazing. And y'all have done it too when you're ministering to somebody. They're hurting, they're not thinking, and the enemy has flooded them with lies. And as you minister to them, as you pray with them, and as you begin to open their mind to the truth, it's amazing to watch John 10, 10 come to life. Because that person was sitting there, and they've been stolen from. They've been destroyed. 
their attitude, their actions, their heart shows they've been killed on the inside. But when you show them the light of Jesus and tell them the truth, how the life comes back in. It's very, very powerful. The gates of hell will not prevail. What the world is the gates of hell will not prevail. They're stationary. That word prevail is actually two words. It's a compound word. The first word is opposition, intensity, and struggle. The second word is force and might. Remember, although the gates of hell are moving, Satan and his angels are. Okay, this is like their base. They're moving, but if you can take out the base, when you're trying to get rid of hands, do you just pour stuff on one hand and heal and it goes away? If you're going to get the hands, you've got to get to the clean. You've got to get to the, the colony in order to make it work. This is the colony. Opposition, intensity, struggle, force, or life. He never said that Satan wouldn't try. Never said against the hell would not try to figure out and work on you and get you and beat you down. He just said that it would not prevail. The more spiritual and mature you become, the more intense the battles. So don't think that when you get older, it's going to get easier. When you get older, it's going to get harder. But you've been tough and tough, and you don't understand just how hard it is. Because you've been fighting a long time, and you got scars. And all where those scars are, not only they're a place of pain, but they're a place of healing. And they're a place where the anointing has touched your body. It's a place of victory. And so the scars that you've got, although the battle is more intense, you can handle it better because you've got the scars. Satan, again, let me say it, Satan is a defeated foe. And he won't accept it. Closing. In this world, we have tribulation of good good year, God right overcome the world, John 16, 33. You will have tribulation. And the word tribulation, literally in the Greek, is unusual pressure. Anybody have any unusual pressure lately? Like Always. In this world, you're going to have unusual pressure. But be of good cheer, be of good courage. To be cheerful and full of courage because the cross has already settled the battle issue. Remember, Satan is a defeated foe. The problem is, number one, he won't accept it. <coughs> Get ready. Here comes another ouchie moment. The problem is Satan will not accept his defeat. That's number one problem. Number two problem is we won't accept it either. Wow. That's powerful. Are you fighting to victory or are you fighting through victory? If I have accepted this defeat, I'm fighting through victory. I'm already a winner. But if I don't accept his defeat, then I'm not accepting my victory either. And I'm fighting trying to obtain victory. But I know he's already lost and I know we've already won. So I'm victorious no matter what. Remember this. Number one. The devil cannot stop the building of God's church. And it's not a building, it's us. 
We said this all the time. I say it all the time too, but I have to see. Oh, see, it's the first one to say it, but I didn't see that he was one of the major ones that said it. And I said, this is pretty cool, because I never knew this. How many ever heard of Billy Graham? Anybody heard of Billy Graham? Oh, yeah. Wasn't he awesome? Yes. So, we went up in Charlotte to Dove's Nest. I found out that on the other side of Dove's Nest, there was Billy Graham. And he came over and wrote in his hand a letter. He'd been praying for Dove's Nest and wrote about Dove's Nest and how God was going to use it. He prayed for God to use it. And they took that handwritten letter and they stuck it back in the hallway. I'm going to relax. I thought it was the most, the most awesome thing in that place I saw was that letter of Billy Graham saying good things were going to happen. I was feeling kind of funny when I first got there. I was driving all that way and all that stuff and some of the problems we were having trying to get in. I just said we're going to get in. Then I said we weren't going to get in. I was driving all that way. We all kinds of stuff was going on. And, and I looked over and I was praying. I said, God, you got to do something. This is not right. This is crazy. They just said we were accepted. And I just said we're not accepted. Blah, 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 blah. And so uh, I prayed to God, and I said, God, I know we win. What's going on? And I saw that over Billy Graham, and I said, you're right. I'm not going here. We're in about it. They go and say, I'm sorry, that was a mistake. She's in. Billy Graham said, I've read the last page of the Bible. It's all going to turn out all right. I've always said, I read, the, I read the back of the book, and we win. I like that even better. I read the last page of the Bible, it's all going to turn out all right. Randy, come on here, bro. Play something like Please. There's spiritual warfare. It started 6,000 years ago in the garden. That's where it started. Satan did his best to rule the promises. That Adam. He did change the trajectory though, trajectory though, because Adam was no longer in that garden. But God said, I'll still be with you. And there's coming a day when the seed of woman is going to attack your seed, serpent. You're going to bite his heel, he's going to crush your head. And we celebrate that in just a couple of weeks. But don't forget. God's got us. Man, oh man, God's got us. Sometimes we wonder. Sometimes we try to figure it out. But God's got us. you got to trust Him. And not fight for the victory. Fight for the victory. Everybody, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up and bow your head and close your eyes. Everybody. Stand up, bow your head, close your eyes. My question to you, first off, is how you and God do it. <clears throat> <coughs> Are you striving to be your best? Or are you just trying to get by? Are you looking forward to sweeping through the gates? Or are you just want to make it in? Just let me make it in. I, I could care less. I, I don't care about all those rewards. I don't care about all this stuff. They just don't want to do this life. God, if I just get in, I'll be happy. And I'll just do whatever it takes just to get me in the door. Or are you, God, I want to be victorious. I want to fight battles. I want to win the battles for other people. I want other people to see that God's powerful and God's moving in our life. The decision's yours. Every head bowed, every eye closed. 
if you know you can be closer to God than you are now, Nobody's looking around. Just slide that hand up. I, I know I can be closer. All right, we're, we're going to pray together. All of us are going to pray together. Okay. Father, 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 I trust you. I trust you. Help me. Help me. To be all I can be. To be all I can be. For you. For you. I rededicate. I rededicate my life to my you. Life to you. Help, me Help me. To strive. To strive. For a powerful. For a powerful. Anointing. In life. In life. I realize. I realize. Satan is a defeated foe. Satan is a defeated foe. Tell me to stand. Tell me to stand. In the victory. In the victory. That you give me. Give me. And fight. And fight. And having done all the stand. Having done all the stand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Every head still bowed. Every eye still bowed. Maybe because of all the unusual pressure, you know, you're having a hard time trying to really get it. That Satan is a defeated foe, and he's fighting you to keep you from accepting it, just like he has it. He's never going to stop fighting you until the end of time. Never will he stop. Your attitude is everything. Those satanic attacks against you and your family is 10%. What Satan's doing is 90% how you respond to it. We're going to pray one more time together. Pray with me, Father. Father, I know. I know. That Satan is a defeated foe. And I realize, I realize that he won't accept it. That he won't accept it. And he's going to fight me. He's going to fight till the day I die. Help me. Help me. To accept. To accept. His defeat. His defeat. And help me. Help me. To accept. To accept. My victory. My victory. Through you. Through you. Help me to understand. Help me to understand. It was Satan attacks. It's ten percent what he does, and ninety percent how I respond. I thank you, God, for this revelation. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. Give Lord a hand clap and praise. Everybody really, really in, was encouraged by it because it seems to spark something inside that's sitting in your pew. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to ask all the wheel. Hey, come on up here. Come on up here to this altar. All the wheel. This is the start. This series, I want us to start it out in style. You can stand, you can kneel, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Lord, for this mighty man. 
for this mighty man of war, for this mighty woman of God, this mighty woman of God, this mighty man of God. I thank you for the mighty man, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the mighty woman, Lord. I thank you, God. You got this. I thank you for the mighty woman, the mighty women, Father. I thank you, Lord. Touch her right now. Listen to them in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for healing right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Go ahead, church. Go ahead and glorify. Glorify. Go ahead and glorify. Thank you, Father.